The Will Rogers portrait in the Oklahoma State Capitol. Other Wilson portraits include Jim Thorpe, Sequoia, Woody Guthrie, Robert S. Kerr, Angie DeBeau, and Carl Albert. Two of the portraits, Jim Thorpe and Sequoia, are of men who Wilson never met. The Jim Thorpe portrait was started with drawings, of course, and then a clay model from the drawing. And because of Jim Thorpe being so unique physically, as well as his successes, I, uh, I went all over finding Indians who might have the physic, physique of Jim Thorpe. And I went to the various Indian schools and the athletes, and, and I, then I found that I was going to have to do him piecemeal. In other words, I couldn't find anybody that was built like Jim Thorpe. So I would get somebody to pose for the arms or the legs or the, the neck and the shoulders and that kind of thing. I was uh, amused by the, trying to find somebody that had feet like Jim Thorpe or ankles like Jim Thorpe and was unable to do so. It made me feel kind of weird going around looking at boys' legs. For example, I found one man who was loading bricks and he had developed these wonderful arms. I found another fellow who was throwing hay up onto a wagon and I had him pose for the shoulders and I found athletes for the legs and, and that's what made me feel like Frankenstein, just putting him together. Somebody said he had the the body of a Greek god. Well, I looked at all kinds of Greek sculpture and nobody looked like Jim Thorpe. The Oklahoma State Capitol commissioned Wilson to do his last portrait for the rotunda. Wilson chose his friend, Woody Guthrie, for the portrait. His song, This Land Was Made For You And Me, really struck a chord. And I thought that's something that he felt to the heart. And I, I started in on sketches of Woody Guthrie with his guitar, which of course he had to have, that was like a second hand. I uh, came up with this idea of him pointing to the vast expanse of Oklahoma as our land. I needed a sky. The sky was in Arkansas, perfect for what I wanted. Here's Woody standing with his guitar pointing really to the vastness of it. and it, reminds everybody of Michelangelo's pointing to God. And uh, that became my picture. Of the numerous portraits, one of the most memorable is of his daughter, Carrie. Carrie grew up to be Miss Indian, Oklahoma. I have pictures of her in her buckskin, and she was beautiful, and she won lots of dances, because they have these competitions for Indian dancers, and she was, was a winner many, many times in many tribes. I posed for the portrait of myself, uh, Carrie's portrait, for, and it was for Mother's Day present. My dad and I got together and we thought that would be nice. So I went up to the studio after, on weekends, and would pose, and so we surprised her. And what was it like growing up a Native American in Northeast Oklahoma? Growing up in Northeast Oklahoma is Indian heritage. There's, there's, it's, there's no separation for me. With my father's interest in painting Indians and actually uh, recording as an anthropologist would culture. And the fact that my mother was a tribal historian, my grandmother was a pure blood who spoke fluent Quapaw. And it was not a matter of, you know, what is it like to be Indian? Well, for me, what was it like not to be Indian? The murals in the Oklahoma State Capitol in Oklahoma City are resplendent with Oklahoma history from the arrival of Francisco Vasquez de Coronado to the Oklahoma land rush. There are four sections, 15 feet high by 26 feet long, yet every image was accomplished in vintage Wilson style. Let's look at one image titled Awi, which is Navajo for baby. It was first done for the mural and I had a Quapo Indian girl posed for the face, but the body was posed for by my daughter in the buckskin dress. And the little baby was posed for by a young baby that was born to an Indian woman who was at the Indian school as a teacher. And she had this young baby, and I made the drawing, and 
I remember the baby was so cute that my wife, who was along, said, Charles, I want you to get me one just like that. I said, you've had your share already. But anyway. Wilson's own words deliver his intent in the murals. I wanted to do something that, that would be memorable and inspiring to say that little boy who, who goes through the Capitol and then goes out fishing and thinks about Oklahoma's roots. By now, the fact that Wilson was a storyteller is apparent. Let's take a look at other stories on canvas that Wilson told. The Shawnee Ribbon Bets portrays how Indians at powwows would wager for bright color ribbons during Indian football games. If you want to bet against someone in another tribe, then you have these hair ribbons that you brought with you in your suitcase, and you tie your hair ribbon on that rope. And if someone wants to bet against you, they tie their hair ribbon on your hair ribbon. And at the end of the football game, whichever the people of the South or the people of the North or whatever, whoever wins gets to pick the hair ribbon of the person who tied their ribbon on yours. Another popular game was the peach seed game. The peach seed game is a game in which the peach seed is in the middle of a bowl and they slap the bowl and if two, two peach seeds show up, it counts so much, and or if one or if none. And that's the peach seed game. And there's an opening in the sky to the house where they play this, and that's where God is watching. And when God gets tired of watching, he will cause one side or the other to win. Other Wilson stories include children at play on a hot summer day, the roadside tourist stop titled Rock of Ages, and the hard work of making sorghum in the Ozarks. But every story is told with a technique that is disciplined to detail. I think the person who's going to become an artist sees, sees design more than he does reality. Color comes along later. I don't think any painting that I know of by the old masters at least, and I have to contend with somebody who drips paint all over a canvas, uh, that's a little different. But even there, he's looking at design. But I think color probably comes last, and color is possibly the least important. Uh, color tends to set the stage, but it doesn't necessarily make the painting. In Wilson's painting on the judging of the war dance, you'll see that Wilson takes your eye through the painting with his flow, always blocking the corners to keep you in the painting. Even the tree is placed to keep your eyes involved in the subject. The design is based on the relationship of one object to another. You'll find no empty or ignored spaces. Wilson makes the space between objects as interesting as the objects themselves. But I try to tell the story with a powwow with the same thing that a musician would try to tell the story of something in a symphony that flows. And it's got to flow just as much as music flows. From the Trumans to Anthony Quinn to Henry Kissinger, Wilson has known many famous people, but he had a lifelong friendship with fellow artist Thomas Hart Benton which started in the 1930s. Well, I think that's a most interesting thing because in the first place, I knew Tom when I was in school because I drew conventionally, let's say, not modernistically. And Tom was well known and, and criticized because he didn't paint what you'd call modern techniques. And so they thought that I would be a good one to be his guide around the Art Institute while he was there lecturing. And we became good friends. Benton